hello students so we are in the third chapter right now so we have discussed the fundamental terms related to rotational dynamics right so now we'll be discussing about angular momentum of a particle okay so one thing that you know right now is angular momentum is the rotational analog of linear momentum right say you have a particle right here okay its position vector is given by the vector r okay so if we have to consider its linear momentum say let it has a linear momentum which has a value vector p then its angular momentum with respect to the origin is defined as vector l which is equal to the cross product of r and p where r is the position vector and p is the linear momentum vector okay now what are all the factors that influence the quantity or the amount and direction of angular momentum one thing that you know it is the measure of r right and then another one the amount of linear momentum that the object has and also the angle between the two vectors angle between the vector r and p right you know that the cross product of a particular of two vectors say here you have a vector a which is a cross product of another vector p and c then we know that the direction of a is perpendicular to the plane in which b and c lies right so the direction of l here will be perpendicular to the direction of the plane in which r and p lies so how do we do the cross product thing so here we have a vector a in this direction and another one p in this direction okay so if you have to take the cross product of a and b then what do you do is it is as shown in the picture okay so we have vector a here and vector b here and by curling the thumb the direction of the product that is a cross b say this vector is c okay so the direction is given by this one which is perpendicular to the plane of a and b in other terms we can write angular momentum as r cross b equal to r p sin theta and cap okay suppose the particle is moving in the x y direction then we know that l will have the z direction or l will be in the z direction right so l z we can write l z equals r p sin theta or r sin theta is a vector that is in the perpendicular direction of that of the p vector okay so we can write it as r perpendicular p so this is the case of a one dimensional angular momentum okay let's see what happens if angular momentum has all the three components if it is 3d okay so l is equal to r cross p so we can Take it as the determinant of i j k x y z p x t y and p z. Okay, and by solving this, what we'll obtain is i into y p x minus z p y minus j into x p z minus z p x plus k into x p y minus y p x. Right. 
so this is what we obtain and from this we can understand that this is the x component right it has the coefficient i and this is the y component which has a coefficient j here we have to reverse the direction since there is a negative sign coming in here and the lz will have the value xpy minus y px there are two examples given in the textbook which you can do as an assignment okay then you will have to find out the angular momentum of a sliding block and the angular momentum of a conical rectangle okay you can submit the assignment through the google meet usually in the case of translational motion we know that the force acting on a body produces an acceleration right here in the case of rotational motion we have to find out what quantity shall we associate with angular acceleration okay so for linear acceleration is caused by force and what causes angular acceleration the answer is the torque right so it is the turning action of force right the value of force is given by r cross f this is a vector okay torque is given by r cross f and the 3d value of force can be obtained by using by finding out the determinant that is given here and the unit of force is that of force is newton and that of r is newton meter so the unit of torque is newton meter okay we have actually discussed in detail about torque in the last class so there is in much to talk about it and the next topic is that we have to find out the relation between torque and angular momentum okay so here this derivation will start with the definition of angular momentum so l is equal to r cross p that what we have with us okay and what we will do here is we will differentiate l with respect to time okay so that's what is done here dl by dt which will be d by dt of the rhs okay which can be rewritten as using the product rule we can write it, write it as r by dt cross p plus r cross dt by dt right so here when you look at the first term it is r by dt is velocity right rate of change in position that is velocity cross mv that is momentum and here we have two vectors which are the same vectors okay when you take the cross product of two same vectors we know that we will obtain zero because the angle between them will be zero and sin theta will be zero so this term vanishes what we are left with is r cross dp by dt right so what we obtain as dl by dt equal to r cross dp by dt which is f r cross f equal to tau right so tau is equal to dl by dt that is when torque acting on a body is zero we can say that the angular momentum will be conserved in that particular case just as in the case of when the external force acting on a body is zero then we know that dp by dt will be a will be zero then meaning that p will be a constant just like that here we obtain that the angular momentum will be a constant in this case the next topic we have to discuss in here is about central force motion and the law of equal area okay so central forces are those forces which are acting either towards or away from a fixed point okay so this can be given by this equation f equals f of r a function of position in the r gap because the force acts either away or towards a fixed point okay so applying this in the equation for torque 
that is torque acting on a particle due to central force, we can obtain it as tau is equal to r cos f, right? So substituting the value for f here, that is r cross f r r cap. So these two are in the same direction, meaning that torque is zero in this case. Or here, the angular momentum is conserved. So generalizing the concept, we can say that in the case of a central force motion, angular momentum is conserved. Okay, so the conservation of angular momentum is very useful while solving equations of motion, which you will be seeing in a moment from now. Okay, let's uh, see an example for that. That we'll consider the aerial velocity. Okay, so say consider a particle moving under the influence of a central force, be it gravitational force or the Coulombic force or anything. Okay, so we have the particle at the position p1 at time p1 or t, okay, t it is, and the particle reaches a position p2 after a time delta t. In time delta t, it reaches this position. So the time is t plus delta t. Okay, and the coordinates of p1 and p2 are given by r and theta. Okay. Here we're considering the spherical polar coordinate rather than the usual Cartesian coordinate system because this will make our problems. Okay, you will see how it comes out like that in a minute. You know. Now, say we'll find out the area of this thing. Okay, so area of O P one P two. We can almost take this as a triangle, right? This is almost shaped like a triangle. That is when the theta, delta theta is very, very small. Okay. So you can consider it as a triangle. So taking the half pH, half can do. You can take this as a base, r plus delta r, and the height to be r delta theta, r delta theta. Okay. So what we obtain here is half can do r squared delta theta plus half into r delta r delta theta. And if that's what we obtained as the area. This is the equation for the area. Now let's differentiate the area with respect to time. So that's what is done here. dA by dt. We can apply the limits. Limit delta t tend to zero, delta a by delta t will be. So substituting the value of a here, we will have the equation to be like this, right? And here, when you look at this, it's delta r into delta theta. These two values are very, very small. So we can actually neglect this whole down. Okay, when we take the limits, this is a quantity which can be neglected. So what we are left with is half r square into delta theta by delta t. And when you apply the limits, we will have d theta by dt, right? Or d theta by dt is theta dot, which is equal to half r square theta dot, okay? So dA by dt, the area traced by a radius vector in one second is known as the aerial velocity, okay? In polar coordinates, we know that velocity can be written as r dot r cap plus r theta dot theta cap. Okay, so if we have to find out angular momentum, it's r is it is r cross p, or is equal to r cross m m b. Okay, and here we can substitute the value for b here, which will give us r cross m this thing. Okay. So here, R and R cap both are in the same direction. So the first term vanishes. What we are left with is the second term, right? So we will have R cross 
R dose M R theta dot theta cap. Okay. And when you take the cross product of this, what we will obtain is M R square theta dot K cap because it lies, K cap lies in a plane that is perpendicular to both R and theta. Okay. Or we can write this as since this is the coefficient of K cap, it should be LZ, right? So equating it with the last equation that we obtained, that is this one, the equation for aerial velocity, dA by dt, we can write it as LZ by 2m, right? Because dA by dt is obtained as half r square theta dot and L is obtained as LZ is obtained as m r square theta dot. So in the case of a planet moving around the sun in elliptical orbit with sun at one of the foci, the gravitational force acting on the planet is a central one, right? So as a result, we know that angular momentum of the planet about the sun will be a constant and the motion will be confined in a plane, right? So as a consequence of the constancy of angular momentum, the aerial velocity will also be a constant. Okay, say the radius vectors, that is the position vector of the planet at two points of time is R1 and R2. Okay, and their corresponding velocities to be E1 and V2. Okay, since the angular momentum is a constant, we can write MVR equal to a constant. Right, or if we are considering this particular point, then m1 v1 r1 equals m2 v2 r2. Right, here the mass of the planet is almost constant all the time, so we can actually emit it. That is, m1 can be taken as m2 equal to m, m1 equal to m2 equal to m, so we can actually cancel this. So v1 r1 equal to v2 r2. Right, which means that the planet moves in an elliptical orbit with sun at one of the foci. When the planet comes close to the sun, it moves faster. And when the planet is away from the sun, that is when R is higher, velocity should be smaller. Right, and this is nothing but k plus second two. And the next thing we have here is there are certain examples given in the textbook that is a torque acting on a sliding block, torque on a conical pendulum, and torque with the gravity. Okay, so we can do these exercises as a homework. Okay, and yeah, of course, you can submit it in the group with the classroom. Okay, and I think we can wrap the class up now. Thank you for listening. Have a good day. Bye-bye.